So let's you and I cut through the crap. The engine we want in this is a turbocharged inline six cylinder diesel. But that, at least in this country, is not going to happen. So who am I to complain when one drops a supercharged V8 in what is ostensibly a box? Now that we're all clear, let's dispense with the bitching and just drive it. So the donor engine should sound familiar to any Land Rover or Range Rover aficionado, a 5 liter V8 that is supercharged, 518 horsepower and 461 pound-feet of torque. Now for those of you that are nostalgic for the mild hybrid inline 6, that is 123 horsepower and 219 pound-feet of torque more. To go along with that change, there is now a quad exhaust that is fitted as standard to all V8 Land Rover Defender 90s and 110s. Then there's the fuel economy. Should we even discuss that? 15, 19, 16 combined. Then there's another change that goes along with that engine. Some of the programming changes specifically to the terrain management system. They add a different mode, a terrain mode that deals with loose gravel and tarmac a bit differently considering the torque that comes out of that. Then there are the performance figures. Zero to 60 drops from 5.7 to 4.9, and then VMAX goes up from 129 to 149 miles an hour. It was already heavy, but adding that lump in the front, 5,445 pounds, or depending on your express your weights and measures, 2,469 kilograms. Put another way, that is about 620 pounds extra over the six cylinder we drove a couple of months back with that dynamic mode. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's fast. I expected this to be quick, but man, oh man, it's downright fast. The only issue, wow, does it have some squat in the ass end. This, there's like a balance of swagger and squat. And this is even in dynamic mode. I tried this coming up from the hangar in the regular mode and oh my God, I felt like I was on a surfboard and I've got a huge swell and I'm about to go over. That's the only way to describe this sensation. Now putting aside all of that, the transmission, it's the same eight speed torque converter automatic we've driven in Jaguars, Land Rovers and BMWs. And here I go so far as to saying that this, it's better matched with this engine than the mild hybrid inline six. Like you want to get some passing power, just open the taps with your foot. You don't even need to use the larger paddle shifts on this thing. Now let me be a bit more clear about that swagger. It comes in around 2000 RPM and it is an explosion of power. Something you really don't expect in a vehicle like this, the, the inline six, was more than enough power. This, it's a complete transformation of the personality of the new Defender. Is it to the level of the G-Wagen? Not exactly. Now, as you and I have discussed in many episodes with many different cars, you can't just drop that kind of power into the engine bay and call it a day. Here, they did make some changes. I would argue they need to do a couple more. Uh, first stop, the brakes. 14.9 inch diameter rotors in the front. That's a little bit bigger. And they have the cool blue calipers. And in the back, it's 14.3. I honestly can't tell you the stopping power is enough here. It's good around town, but when you're pushing this thing pretty hard, I'd say you need a little bit more stopping power, perhaps more in the rear, maybe even go up to something like 15 and a half, almost 16 inch diameter rotors. That would help a lot here. Now that in turn brings us to a recap of what underpins all defenders. Up front, double wishbone, in the back, multi-link. Now they're on offer with two different setups. There's the regular steel springs in the basic vehicles, and then there's the air ride. The air ride is the only suspension system on offer in the V8s. I think you kind of need that because there's a good delta between the different drive modes. It's very noticeable in dynamic, eco, and regular comfort modes. It's a bit too soft, and let's be honest, this is not an off-road vehicle. This really should be an SVR only, and the reality is, there just isn't enough control over all planes of motion. 
there's a lot of pitch in this vehicle, even though they've added bigger sway bars front and rear. That's one of the big differences in the suspension between the V8 and the six cylinder. Then they have some more control over the yaw of the vehicle, specifically in the back. Now, just think about the logic of that. You're getting more twisting power from the engine to the rear of the vehicle, so they want to control that. And there, I would say they've done a moderate job. It's that yaw control, or really lack thereof, that's giving us all the squat in the ass end. If they were to retune it just a bit to be able to control more planes of motion, you wouldn't get that very harsh squat under really hard acceleration. Aside from that, the ride quality is unusually good, like it was in the other vehicles. It's just this, it's more lively. When you add more power to this, really most vehicles, it makes it, I want to say, a better overall experience. This, it's a more usable experience. Yeah, I'd say it's more swagger than usable, but when you're driving it around town, it is a much more fun experience. The other one feels like a diesel. This feels like you've got the same vehicle, but it is just so much lighter, almost to the point where you don't notice the 620 extra pounds. Now, tying all this together are a couple of pertinent details, like for example, the wheels, only on offer is 22s, as opposed to the regular Land Rover Defenders, where they can be as low as 18s. And then there's the ground clearance. Here, I'm kind of surprised. I expected this thing to ride significantly lower. Again, I'm looking at this as a road-only kind of flavor, but in reality, it's about the same ground clearance as the other Land Rover Defenders you and I have driven at 8.6 inches. And then there's the wheelbase. I mean, this is the 90, so it kind of changes the ride quality and driving dynamics a bit because it's a 102-inch wheelbase, and you add that extra power, <laughs> The short wheelbase is much more noticeable here because you feel like your head is on a swivel when you drive this thing. You noticed it a little bit, the short wheelbase in the lower powered engine, but this, it's so much more noticeable. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options Game, with today's contestant, an incredibly special Land Rover Defender 90. This one with a V8. Some would say that is a completely crazy idea. Either way, this one is a further special edition. It's the Carpathian edition. We'll talk more about that in a bit. And it has a base price of built in $111,200. Now for the avoidance of doubt, the V8 Defender 90 actually has a base price without this special edition of $104,000. Then for further clarification, a Defender 90 with steel springs and a small engine is 50 grand. So this is more than double the price. Then we get to the Carpathian edition. That's basically paint and tape. That's effectively what it is. So it's this color, and then they have the matte finish on it, and then black trim around the vehicle. That's effectively about a $6,000 option above the $104,000 base price of the V8. Then there's the color inside this vehicle. It's dark gray and black, not interesting. There is no contrast here, which brings us to an important point. There are only three colors on offer with the V8. Now, not exactly along the lines of the Henry Ford ethos, but one could have any color they want as long as it's black, gray, or white. Please, oh, please, oh, please. Can we have more options? Then we need to press on to factory fitted options, and that would start with a basic interior protection and storage package. This is effectively rubberized floor mats and a trunk mat here for $500. Then if you want the 22 inch wheels, which is the only wheel on offer, finished in satin dark gray, that is $200. Then the screen in this car, you will notice it's different. It's like the screen in the Jaguars we've been driving. It's the 11.4 inch screen, kind of like a tablet. Well, that changes from the 10 inch that's fitted as standard. That is an additional $140. Then a handover pack, have no idea what this is, but it's cheap, $25. Then you must be punished, at least in the state of California. You see our fearless leader, Comrade Newsom, he wants to see you because you need to pay an additional $100 for California emissions. Then the only other item we need to add would be the destination and handling, which is not from the Midlands of England, Rather, Nitra or Nitra, Slovakia, and Schuldigung for the pronunciation, $1,350, which brings us to a total retail price of 
$525. So I will admit, this thing, it absolutely makes me giggle. But there are indeed some questionable items we need to discuss. Uh, and the biggest one would be color and trim here. Uh, the Land Rover Defender was learned in two other episodes. You can customize these things. Like this can be a different color, this can be a different texture, and there's different types of like woods that are on offer. In the V8, for some reason, you can't customize any of that to make an already very special car even more special. Like this is available with a tan leather interior, but that's it. It's black or tan and nothing else. And some of the detailing, some of the changes that you can make in the other Land Rover Defenders we've driven, like they change the color here, or they put the wood in one there, or you can put the wood down here. None of that stuff can be done here. Yeah, they add a suede or like a fake suede steering wheel. That's a nice touch if you like it. While you and I are on the topic of the steering wheel, maybe not just making it suede, how about making it a smaller diameter steering wheel? Again, a theme I keep on coming back to here, I don't see anyone taking this thing off-road, so you don't really need the bigger steering wheel to take advantage of the off-road abilities of this vehicle. How about making a small diameter, at least an option, which would change the look of the dash and the interior a bit more. Let's go a bit further. As a matter of fact, make it more like the Porsche program, like paint to sample and Porsche exclusive manufacturer interiors with like contrast stitch. This again, this is more of a road going vehicle. So I'd expect this to be more like a bespoke tailored suit on the inside than something I'm going to take off roading and then hose out when I get it at home. And then a brief note about the screen. That's the same one we've seen in some of the new Jaguars we've driven and here they've adopted it to the Defender dashboard. Now these are still fitted as standard with a 10 inch screen, which I'd say works. I'm still trying to decipher why they charge extra for this screen in the fancy model. My thinking is most people would want the bigger screen. My guess, and this is like a total stab in the dark here, they're doing the bigger screen as an option because Maybe some people would want to see the cleaner design of the screen that's behind these trim pieces. That's the only thing I can come up with. Otherwise, that's the better screen. There is a further spot of confusion. Yes, there's this fancy Carpathian edition. Terrible name, if I might say so myself. And then there's a Bond edition, which, come on, how cool is that? But that one, also a V8, and it's only on offer in black, and it too has blue calipers. Yeah, it's got Bond badging, but that's about it. Maybe speak to Q and come up with a version that's on offer only for folks with legal CCWs. If you can't do that, how about at least changing the diamond plating on the hood, both the color and the material that's used for it? If you couldn't tell, I am incredibly smitten with this thing, which is rather surprising because A, I don't like any SUVs, and B, if we're honest with one another, this whole equation, totally stupid. Is it as stupid as a G-Wagen? No, but that's why the G-Wagen's a bit cooler than this. But then again, that, at least in G63 form, is double the price. So this is kind of cool, or at least more stupid in a different way, because it's half the price, which brings us to the wish list. And there, on top of all the color and trim stuff we discussed, this, it shouldn't exist as a base V8 or this Carpathian whatever. It should really just be an SVR. It should have a lower ride height and be road going only, but this is only one man's opinion. So this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I do want to leave you a little bit behind the scenes. For about 20 days, a little bit more, Kumo and I were driving around in EVs preparing for this because we knew at 15 MPG, we were going to break the budget, not just on cars, but on Avgas. Until I see you in the next episode, bish beta.